Hi, and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins, and I hope you're having a great day today. Today is an advice from a CEO episode, and we're going to be talking about creating digital employee experiences, which is totally different than the things that we've been talking about recently, but I wanted to shake it up a little bit. And I'm in the middle of creating a big shift uh, by rolling out a digital platform for our customers' employees. And I've learned a lot about the importance of it. I think we all have as we've been using technology more and more to collaborate and to coordinate and to streamline and to uh, make things more efficient, hopefully, uh, for our employees and for our customers. So I thought it would be good to talk about what a digital employee experience is and why it's important. So First of all, what is a digital employee experience? Well, it's simply how your employees are engaging or using online tools, apps, software, things like that. And examples would include your HR systems, such as uh, easy way to access policies, compensation, PTO, performance management. It's things like communication and collaboration tools, such as email and instant messaging, video conferencing, easy to use phone systems. Um, digital employee experiences include productivity and workflow systems, such as project management tools like Asana, document storage, such as OneDrive and collaboration tools like Team or Slack, uh, and then educational and training platforms for em um, employee development, um, which would involve like a learning management system, things like that. So the best companies have high levels of engagement in their um, digital employee experience tools. Um, and it really helps employees be much more productive when it's seamless. And I get it, it's 2020 and most companies are using many types of softwares like Asana and Zoom and their ERP systems and Salesforce and, and a plethora of others. But the issue is integration, and that's where creating a digital employee experience really comes into play because no one wants to use 15 different tools that are not interconnected to do their jobs. That's just frustrating and annoying. So the very first thing I'd like to talk about is just communication around your tools. I think a lot of companies implement these different platforms trying to solve problems, but they forget how to tie it all together for employees. So. At Stone Age, uh, when we went to a remote, remote workforce, uh, hybrid workforce uh, during the pandemic, we started instituting all different kinds of tools that we hadn't used before. And, uh, and people were wondering, how do I use these? And this is primarily around collaboration, but there was a lot of confusion about when do I use Teams? When do I use Asana? When do I use OneDrive? When do I use Salesforce? And so we realized we were not communicating clearly like when we should be using these tools um, and for what purposes. So we created a simple flowchart, and that really helped when people could understand, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what's expected of me. And this is how this tool works. Um, it really helped streamline and there was much broader adoption of the tools. So communication, 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 help tie it all together for your employees so that they understand how to use the software and when to use the software uh, and the digital tools so that it's seamless and less frustrating. So seamless, <laughs> that's what I want to talk about next. So that's really important with, uh, with creating a good digital employee experience. We expect seamless technology, seamless apps in our life. Like think about the iPhone, right? In the way that Apple coordinates and, 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 and ties everything together. It makes it so easy and it's something that we're coming to expect. I mean, I just use my phone to pay for everything. It's all integrated. It's all very simple and elegant to use. There's lots of other systems out there that are the same way and we've really come to expect it. And we have to create those same types of seamless experiences in our employee digital experiences as well. If it's too hard for your employees to access information or to use the technology tools that you provide, They'll get frustrated and it will negatively impact their jobs and their overall work experience, which is the opposite of what we're trying to go for in these employee-centric companies that we're trying to create nowadays. And when a company's technology is really well integrated, there's a five times uh, greater likelihood that they um, have better engagement. And there's a 47% lower chance of attrition. And this is all according to the OC Tanner's 2021 Global Culture Report. 
It matters. Five times higher engagement when it's seamlessly tied together and a 47% lower chance of, of attrition. That's really big numbers. So this is something that's really important for leaders to be thinking about. The role of technology cannot be overstated when it comes to creating a, a connected and tied out and aligned workforce, especially as our employees are more and more dispersed um, as we continue to go through this uh, work from home and hybrid workplace uh, experiment that we're going through. So I really recommend that as you're thinking about creating this experience for your employees, you need to personalize it. You need to integrate it. You need to think about how easy it is to use. And the good news is, is that your employees feel really good at, about this. Um, according to that same survey by the OC Tanner Group, 77% um, of the employees surveyed believe that advanced technology is going to improve their work experience. Even if it means that it's changing their jobs, or even if it means it gets rid of some jobs, people are expecting technology to make their lives better. So your employees are asking for this, even if you do have to go through some change management process when you're instituting these new uh, digital tools. So these tools will really do a, a good job of creating a, a greater connection within your organization and, and helping your employees communicate and collaborate better, it's really worth the effort to do, to think about, to be very intentional about. So how do you go about creating a digital employee experience? Well, according to an article published by the Academy to Innovate HR, they suggest the following steps, and I agree with them completely. So one, start with the end game in mind. Know where you want to go. Um, my favorite quote, Alice in Wonderland, if you don't know where you're going, any path will get you there. You need to know what you are trying to achieve as you create this digital employee experience. Number two, define what you want to achieve. I think that's the, the next step, important step. And you need to make sure that it's actually achievable. If you have this huge vision and if you don't break it down into what you're going to achieve in phase one, phase two, phase three, you're never gonna get done and you're gonna just cause more frustration. Number three, communicate your vision. This is really important. Here's why we are bringing on this technology. Here is how we're going to use it. Here's what's expected. Here's how we're going to train you. Here's the vision of where we're going to go and how we're going to get there. The fourth step is enable a cross-functional team. Uh, and this is important. It can't just be IT, right? I believe the IT department's going to be dead. There's, there's going to be technologists in every department because we have to move faster. The, year, the days of a two-year implementation are over. Technologies change by the time you get something implemented. We're going to have to be fast. So you're going to need a cross-departmental, cross cross-functional team to really help you define what your needs are, do the research, and um, implement, integrate, and train. Number five, research and choose the technology. The discovery process is really important. Um, I've made several mistakes in selecting software too quickly and I've regretted it. Um, and so we've established a much more disciplined process of evaluating which software tools we're going to be implementing and it's really helped a lot. So researching and having a, a rigorous pro process for selection is really important. Number six, I have talked about this a little bit before, do not expect to transform everything at once. It's just not gonna happen. We started with collaboration tools, then we went to creating um, virtual demos and sales tools for our customers um, and sales team to be able to interact virtually. And now we're creating this next level of a digital customer experience and tying that into what it's going to look like for our employees. We just took one bite at a time as we've been going through this evolution. So pick what's most important to you and get that done and then iterate to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. Seven, provide sufficient training. That's really important. Everybody needs to learn how to know how to use these tools. Number eight, measure the digital employee experience. So what, how are people interacting with it? What is the engagement levels? What is the... Uh, attrition rate, what's the bounce rate, all of those different things that you need to be understanding and measuring is really important. And then finally, work on improvements. You're going to constantly take those metrics and that feedback that you're getting um, as you're measuring how your employees are engaging, using, and enjoying using the digital tools, and then you're going to constantly improve. So I think those nine steps are really great. I'm going to include them in the show notes for 
this episode on my website. So if you want to go back um, and look at that and read the article um, from uh, the Academy to Innovate HR, it'll all be there. So I really agree with these steps. Um, it's actually exactly what we just did as we were selecting the platform we're going to be using for our digital customer experience and having a rigorous method to go through the process is really important. So I am, you know, there's obviously a lot of details and a lot of steps that go into those nine steps, but I think that that simply lays it out for you. And it's a, an easy way to start to line out how you're going to build a roadmap to, um, to develop this employee experience. So like I said, um, getting ready to roll out this, uh, this, well, we're just in the very beginning stages, I should say, of, of, uh, of building out this digital customer experience. And we're really excited about it. Um, to wrap things up, I think just in my experience, the hardest thing to wrap your head around as a leader is just exactly how much, many resources this is going to take to get done. I think we always underestimate how long it's going to take, how many resources you're going to need and how much it's going to cost. And then we get disappointed. Scope creep will always happen no matter how disciplined you are. Something's going to come up and surprise you. And so um, I think you just need to have the expectation that it's going to be expensive and it's going to take, I should say, it's going to be more expensive than you're anticipating. It's going to take longer. And you really need to try to resource it right. And I don't know of one company who's ever over-resourced a, uh, a software implementation, a digital tool implementation. We always try to do it with the bare minimum because we have the rest of our work to do too. And um, I think you're just always going to fall short in that area. And if you don't, you're amazing. And I wish I was you. <laughs> but we have limited resources being a relatively small company. And you know, we can only we can only to give so much to certain projects. And so we always have to make do. So I think that's just something to wrap your head around, try to wrap your head around and don't get frustrated with your team when they come to you and say, you know, hey, here's a roadblock. It's going to happen um, as you as you implement these types of technologies. But it's so important. Um, I think that creating a great digital experience for your employees is the way of the future. It's going to be how you attract and retain talent and it's going to be what's expected. So, all right, well, hopefully that was useful. A little something different for today. Uh, now on to my question of the week, which comes from an old friend who reached out to me on Facebook after reading some of my articles on Forbes and said, Carrie, I am an, a rut at work. What should I do? I cannot get out of it. And I get it. Uh, it is hard to be motivated and driven all of the time, especially in today when the world is so volatile and stressful and there's so much uncertainty and there's so many issues. Like I feel horrible for my supply chain uh, team and production coordination team. They're just constantly dealing with stress and burnout is real. And I'm sure that it's hard to get up and get motivated every day when you know that there's just going to be another problem that you have to face. But we have to, we have to get through it. We have to figure out how to re-energize ourselves when, when things get tough and when you're like, eh, I don't really want to do this today or maybe anymore. So the advice that I gave her is first, do some self-reflection um, and some self-exploration. Ask yourself some questions. Why did I choose this career? What did I love about it? Uh, what used to motivate me? What made me excited about my job? What's my purpose in my work? And if it's missing, um, why? What happened? Um, what motivates me? What demotivates me? Write these things down. Take some time to really explore and understand what's going on. You might just get some answers um, by asking yourself these questions and actually writing out the answers and read through them. Maybe talk to uh, a close friend or somebody who knows you well, your partner, and see if you can pinpoint, you know, really, did you? Are you, are you burned out? Are you ready for something new? Or is it just the stress of the job and you've been grinding for a while and you really do still love what you do? You just need a break. So I think having that understanding will be important for whatever decision you make um, on ways to re-energize yourself. So that's always the first thing I do is ask myself, why am I feeling this way? And really try to to dig it out and understand it. <clears throat> and even if you don't know for sure, try. It could be X, Y, Z. It could be these things. Um, I, I find that when you 
put it on paper and you start to label it, it does help you understand it a little bit better, even if you're unsure in the moment. Once you have that list, then ask yourself, what are two things I can start doing right now to make it better based on what I just found out in the self-exploration? And what are two things that I can stop doing? Uh, and I think that stop doing is really important. Um, and a lot of times we just have too much on our plate. So I'm going to stop doing this and this and see if that helps make you feel a little bit less overwhelmed. Um, so that's, that's kind of the first step. Um, the second thing is take a few days off. It is okay to take a few days off and to say, I got to just go decompress. I need to get away from my work for a little bit because me sitting here being de-energized and demotivated isn't helping things and it isn't actually getting things done. Go unplug. If that's take a day off and go to the spa, go for a hike, uh, read a book, I don't know, veg out and watch, you know, TV. I don't know, whatever it is for you that makes you feel like you can unplug and, and re-energize, do that. Uh, it's really important that you take time for self-care and that you give yourself a little bit of a break if you need it. You're not just going to magically come up with um, energy to do your job and motivation to do your job if you're literally just like, ah, I just have to keep grinding. So take a little bit of time. That's okay. Um, another suggestion that I have is go back and read emails or performance reviews, any kind of feedback that you've gotten on a job well done. That can help re-energize you and remind you, uh, this is what it feels like when I'm performing at my best, when I'm really helping my teammates, when I'm really solving problems, when I'm moving the company forward. Use the feedback um, as inspiration to find a little bit of a spark to say, okay, uh, this is why I did this. And I really want to make sure that my teammates see me this way and show up this way. So I'm going to take my couple of days off and I'm going to use this as motivation. That's something that always helps me. Finally, the last thing I would say, and this is me, um, I am a believer in doing work to actually <laughs> Do more work when I'm feeling overwhelmed because usually it's my task list that's making me feel demotivated. And I know that's not something that everybody should subscribe to and I am not prescribing it to everybody. But for me, sometimes just sitting down and getting some stuff done really helps me feel more energized because I can say, oh, I got these things done. So when I'm feeling like uh, I'm stuck, I'm not very motivated, I make a list of three really important things if I get these done, I'm going to feel good and I make sure that I get them done. If I have to work on a Saturday and get them done and then take my Sunday off, that's what I do. And that for some reason works really, really well for me because then I can say, see, I was able to push through it. I was able to knock these things out and now I'm not going to put so much pressure on myself to feel like, oh, I don't really want to do this because I just knocked it out. So those are some of the tips that I have for, um, for helping yourself feel re-energized, you know, go for a walk. Um, I just read an article. I can't remember. I think on CNN that said there really is, it only takes a tiny little bit of exercise to help with depression. I really recommend that if you're feeling de-energized and demotivated, go out for a walk, go out for a run, do something that's physical. It's amazing what those endorphins can do to help us feel a little bit more motivated and energized and better about ourselves. So be kind to yourself in this process. Um, we all lose our mojo from time to time. Everything ups and flows in life. Sometimes we are on it and sometimes we are not. And that is okay. It's impossible to be on 100% of the time. So just remember that this too shall pass and stay focused on the, the long game understand where these feelings are coming from, give yourself a little bit of a break, try some different things uh, to see if it can help you get a little bit re-energized. And if, if you can't, then maybe it's time for a new role. And I know that can be scary for people uh, looking at how they want to put themselves out there. But I know when I was in a huge rut in Austin and making really poor choices, and part of it was because I was really unhappy and demotivated in my job, making a change and leaving that role and trying something different was a game changer. And, uh, and sometimes that's just what you have to do. And I know that that can be a little bit scary, but 
we're not all meant to do the same thing for the rest of our lives. Very few people do that. And maybe it is time to say, I'm ready for a change and, and put in for a new role. Talk to your manager about a different type of project um, and see what else you can find that might be re-inspiring to you. Let you try new things, stretch yourself a little bit. All right, that is it for this session of Advice from a CEO. I hope you found that useful. I look forward to seeing you next week uh, as I have another great interview. And if you like this podcast, please like it, rate it, write a review, subscribe to it, share it. It always helps with the algorithms and I very much appreciate it. Thanks so much. Have a great day.